Hello friends, I am Meg from NurseMegRN.com. I am a nurse for over 12 years and I wanna help new nurses succeed. That is the point of this YouTube channel. I also have some creepy stories from the hospital and also some really funny, hilarious things that have happened to me. So if you like that kind of content, you should subscribe to this channel, like this video if you are here for it, and of course find me on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. So let's get started to the meat of this video. As you can tell from the thumbnail, this is Common Labs and Tests Explained. I'm gonna be reading directly from one of my books, The New Nurse Survival Guide. It's kind of evolved from a book into a huge video course. This video course is literally the foundation of bedside nursing. It's everything that they should have taught you in school and didn't. It's everything your preceptor should teach you, but maybe they just don't have time within their shift. So that is why I'm here. I'm gonna be your virtual preceptor. When I precepted nurses, especially new grads, I would see this huge gap between school passing the NCLEX and actual real life, being on their own and off orientation. They were still lost. They were still feeling overwhelmed. They still didn't know how to communicate well with other nurses and doctors. And they were staying till like 8 p.m. trying to catch up on their charting. No. So I created this resource, this book, to give to all of my preceptees to help them get the foundation so that they can really focus on honing in on their skills, never falling behind, and being confident. So if you're interested in the new nurse survival guide, I will put a link down below in the description along with maybe a little coupon code for when you go and purchase it. So let's get started with common labs and tests explained. Let's start with a CBC, the complete blood count. Within the CBC is WBCs, RBCs, RDWs, HCTs, HGCs, and HGBs, and MCV, and platelet, and mean corpuscular hemoglobin. So within those tests, I'm gonna tell you what each one stands for and why they are ordered, the rationale behind it. Let's start with, importantly, the white blood cell count, WBCs. Now, of course, it counts like all five of your white blood cell counts, and it really is an indication of infection. So if you have a really high WBC, it's an indication of infection or inflammation. Now, if you have low numbers, that means that you are immunocompromised, that you are at risk for infection. Next we have RBCs, which stands for red blood count. The red blood cells are the cells that carry the oxygen throughout the body and they also remove CO2. Very important when you uh, partner this with your uh, BMPs and your other labs. Next is RDWs. This is like the size of the actual red blood cell and if you have large differences and variations in your red blood cell size, you may have some type of anemia. Next is hematocrit. Now this means the portion of the red blood cells in a certain amount of whole blood. So high levels of hematocrit can mean dehydration and low levels partnered with hemoglobin can mean a sign of bleeding. Now next, hemoglobin. This is the big one that is an indicator of bleeding and whether we need to maybe transfuse blood. Um, so it is the oxygen carrying part of the red blood cell. So low levels will mean a sign of bleeding. They're bleeding out internally or they're, obviously you can tell they're bleeding out. <laughs> Next is MCV, which is mean corpuscular volume. Now, if this is high or if there's huge variances in this, then it usually means you have uh, some sort of like vitamin or mineral deficiency like B12 or uh, folic acid. A platelet count, the PLTs. So the platelets are the types of cells that help with clotting. So if you have issues with clotting and you are bleeding, they may transfuse uh, packed red blood cells to raise the hemoglobin along with maybe some PLTs, maybe some platelets. Low platelets can uh, cause bleeding. Now, uh, mean corpuscular hemoglobin, this is how much hemoglobin your actual red blood cells have. So there you go. There's your CBC, your complete blood count. Let's move on to the BMP, which is the basic metabolic panel. Uh, basic metabolic panel is calcium, carbon dioxide, chloride, creatinine, glucose, potassium, sodium, and BUN, or urea um, 
nitrogen. So let's start with calcium, which is abbreviated CA when you see it within the BMP. So the calcium obviously helps your uh, muscles contract, but it also helps, has a small role in blood clotting. Uh, next is carbon dioxide, CO2. So this number, knowing your CO2, can give an indication of how well your kidneys are functioning, of course, how well your lungs are exchanging gas. Next is chloride. This can measure how hydrated or dehydrated you are along with the sodium, but we'll get to that in a couple ones down. Next is creatinine. This is the big number that indicates how well your kidneys are functioning. Obviously the BUN and the urea nitrogen have something to do with it, but um, renal wise or when the renal doctor is ordering a BMP, they're really paying attention to the creatinine over the BUN as an indicator of how well the kidneys are functioning and if they need um, dialysis. Next is glucose, your blood sugar. So obviously this is what your cells use for energy, so you need glucose. But if there is an imbalance, you have an issue. So too low, people are gonna be like lethargic, they have no energy, your cells have no energy. And if it's too high, this can cause a lot of metabolic issues. So you need to kind of keep it within a nice range. Um, next is potassium. Potassium is a key mineral in how your uh, muscles will contract. Um, and also, of course, if you have high levels of potassium or really low levels of potassium, this can cause arrhythmias. Next is sodium, which is abbreviated NA. This mineral balances how much the body, the body um, uses water and how much water the organs will receive. Low levels of um, sodium will cause confusion. That's a good one to, to check, especially in little old ladies. Um, check the, the sodium after you check for a UTI. Next is BUN or the urea nitrogen. This is an indicator of how well the kidneys are function partnered with the creatinine. And there you go. That is your basic metabolic panel, your BMP. Next, let's move on to coags or your coagulation tests. This includes um, PT, PTT, INR, um, and some people also order blood gases um, with that. So let's talk a little bit about each one. A PT is the prothrombin time, and a PTT is the partial thromboplastin time. And then the INR is the <laughs> international normalized ratio, which sounds like a psych thing. <laughs> Uh, but it's not. So these together, these are predicting the ability of your body's ability for your blood to clot. Um, the test is also ordered to show the effectiveness of a blood thinner or your risk of bleeding. For example, if you um, are taking Coumadin, you got to get your INR done all the time. Or if you're on heparin, you're checking your PTT levels to make sure that you're, it's not too low. Um, that you're not at a, a risk for bleeding and it's not too high that you're at a risk for clots. So yeah um, Let's see next is blood gases blood gases are really important. This is not taken from the vein This is taken from the artery and it's literally measuring the gases in your blood oxygen uh, carbon dioxide bicarb um, also measuring the lactic acid also measuring the pH of your blood, so the acidity or if it's basic. Now this is an indicator of how well your lungs are exchanging all of the gases. It can also be ordered to see if uh, the, BiPAP, the BiPAP that they are wearing is effective or the CPAP that they are wearing is um, effective. Um, they'll also order this when they are intubated to see if you know they have the right amount of gas exchange when they are breathing. It's also an indicator of some metabolic issues as well. You can kind of mess up your gases. Um, you can also have super high levels of lactic acid if you have injury. Um, let's see, let's see, what else? I think that's it. <laughs> so there you go. Those are kind of like the most common ones. Obviously there's a, a bunch of other labs and tests that people order, but the, mo the main ones are uh, the coags, the blood gases, the BMP, and the CBC. 
So I really hope that this helps um, new nurses when the doctor is like, oh, they, they changed from normal sinus rhythm to like an arrhythmia, like a, S1 block or something, what's their potassium today? And the nurse will be like, why do they wanna know the potassium? Because high levels of potassium or low levels of potassium can cause arrhythmias. So I hope this kind of gives you like the full picture. Um, and like I said, I was reading exactly from my book. So if you want to print this out and take it with you to work, that's ideal. And then read it as like you're checking your uh, labs for a certain patient and you're assessing them and you're kind of putting all the puzzle pieces together I promise you everything is going to become second nature I know when you first become a nurse and you're off orientation you're on your own it's overwhelming all these new tests and this new language that you have to learn but you will get it you will learn and you're going to know it so well that you're going to be able to teach the next generation. So that's my goal for you. I really hope this video helped. Let me know down below in the comments if this helped or if you have anything to add because I mean obviously there's millions of reasons why people, uh, doctors or practitioners will order these certain tests. So if you have anything to add, go ahead and start a conversation in the comments. I would love to read it and kind of join in. Always let me know where you're watching from. I'm so interested. I went live on TikTok this morning and uh, there was someone from Holland which was super cool and someone from uh, Belgium who joined in and, and wanted to kind of like give their perspective as a nurse about something. So yeah, let me know where you're watching from. And of course you can find me on my blog, nursemegrn.com. There's a ton of free resources for you there. You can actually get my free report sheet there. You just put in your name um, and email and it sends it directly to you. And of course, let's be friends on social media. Uh, come and find me. It's the same name, Nurse Meg RN, on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. So yeah, thank you for watching. You have a great shift. I'll see you next time. Bye.